product provided by Manga Gamer. For more information on this and other Manga Gamer products, please visit MangaGamer.com. But remember, due to the adult content, you must be 18. Welcome everybody to Sorcery Jokers, a new game that just came out today. I've been really hyped for this game ever since it was announced it was coming over. Uh, published by uh, Manga Gamer, uh, developed by Third Eye, who has made uh, games like Bloody Rondo and Shinigami no Testament. Um, I started this game up and I already came into an issue where I cannot use my mouse to select anything. As you can see here, my mouse is moving, but uh, nothing works. Well, kind of. Well, yeah. So I got to use the arrow keys. Um, this is the first manga game release to actually have full 1080p support. Um, that's really small text, but that's okay. Uh, text is probably fine. Maybe turn down the music a bit. Music's usually pretty good, but I, can't, I don't know how to even do that. It's fine. I, oh, I bet the mouse isn't scaled properly to the resolution. That's probably what it is. That's really annoying. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a thing on here that'll fix it, but I'm not seeing anything. Text speed, da, 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 about default screen. See, this is in window mode because it's how I record my games usually. Let's go back to the top. You know what? The hell with that. Let's just start the game. I'll fix it later. Yeah, that seems... Yeah, see? Like, like my mouse is off screen. I guess it works? Yeah. This is definitely scaled up. So it's like the start button's down at the bottom, but it's not because it's window mode. So I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to let them know about that issue. And see, I can't even click start because it clicks off the thing. Because it's outside the window. Whatever. Oh, well, let's just start. Yuden, Yuden. Update, update. Beneath a square cut out of the sky between buildings towering on all sides. Filling that space were clinging shadows of just the sort you'd expect in a place with obstructed light. At twilight, when dusk ruled, a figure bled into the shadows as if right at home. Though the pair searching for this figure were paying due attention, they went right past him without noticing his presence. This wasn't because of his appearance, or because of the carelessness. But rather because he erased his very presence amidst the shadows. With his breath bated and his thoughts turned to the other world, making it unclear whether or not he was still human. So that it was only natural that they'd merely perceived him as part of the gaping darkness. Therefore, it would be more appropriate to describe him as something like a shadow, or perhaps a reflection. This reflection casually lent his eyes and ears to his surroundings, not shuddering even once in the chill around him. It was the season of frost. Countless tiny scars marred the back of the hand held up against his chilled ear. It would be no exaggeration to say that those scars marked the path the reflection had walked his history carved into him. A hissing breath. In an instant, his eyes glinted like a beast hunting prey. Those eyes could pierce even that which was invisible. Outcast is capitalized. Interesting. Was there any meaning in this single clench of his fist? That it was, in fact, all that had transpired. If the transmission had been cut off before the Copa's features had been fully reported, the transmissions were sent by a special method, a method both understood and widely used by population at large. Magic. These transmissions 
specially fortified against modern in in interference, had with extreme ease been cut off by the reflection. He spat dust while running fingers through his hair, which had lacked pigment since his birth. Showing no genuine concern for the matter, and the next instant he fled into the night. The reflection may have had an entry for impossible in his dictionary, but the phrase common sense was certainly not among its pages. He was simply too far removed from the very concept of someone being pursued, as if his pursuers' attempts to apprehend him were the least bit inconvenient. He ran deeper, deeper, and deeper into the alley. He ran with a regular form as if on a daily jog, breathing at a fixed rhythmic pace. But when a foul smell reached his nose, his feet stopped. Black garbage bags, a plastic bin. The season did nothing to disguise the fishy odor of the waste practically bursting from those bags. Going by the information he'd sniffed out, the reflection surmised that the building he was behind housed a kitchen and stepped up to its back door with a quiet composure. Dose. Geometric patterns appeared like a hologram on the blank card he'd drawn just before arriving at the door. This was the first time the reflection had visited this place. The first time he'd touched this door, it had opened just like a magic trick. Abracadabra. He moved through the confined kitchen with a fluid agility. As the reflection slipped through the building to the front exit like a leaf on the wind, it took some time for the workers in the kitchen to exchange glances and come to the realization that he was not actually supposed to be there. You know, you have a hard hat on, carry a clipboard, you go anywhere you want. Allowing his impressions to slip out was his one mistake. Paying no mind to the chef in his fit of anger over the missing plate of chicken, the reflection wiped away the sign of his respite from his lips. At this point, the reflection had already completed his escape. He'd managed to make it to a place devoid of pursuers, perhaps his only want, as he sought complete safety, was to parse his throat. Oh man, I should have grabbed a drink. With quiet and leisurely footfalls, he stepped out onto the main street. Completely devoid of the hurry, nerves, or guilt of one on the run, he looked like nothing more than an average passerby. Therefore, he'd made none of the sort of mistakes that would land him in any new trouble. And any drama he could encounter at this point would only be a product of coincidence or fate. Probably fate. Suddenly, a thunderous roar out of place on a quiet street made his feet stop. Reflection should have been nothing but an average bystander, now yet he stopped. Unnaturally. <laughs> the air and the space around him seemed to slant. He should have barely any presence, yet he's now displayed an unusual concentration. He turned in the direction the sound had come from and glared around the corner, and a few seconds later, <laughs> a girl came <laughs> running across. <laughs> No? Maybe. A man on the run appeared, his long hair waving in the wind. He continued running around the corner without looking where he was going, instead looking behind him as he was being chased by a ghost while irritatedly clucking his tongue. Oi. <laughs> really, he wasn't watching where he was going at all. Upon noticing the reflection before him, the long-haired man quickly bit the bricks and managed to avoid a last-minute collision. Boy, I'm not really liking that white text on that transparent background. It's kind of hard to read sometimes. He halted for a moment as if trying to descri describe, decide between cursing and running. Yeah, do both. Why not? Sick child waiting at home. Seems quite the assumption there.
In that instant, a blazing fireball grazed their noses, burying itself into the ground far ahead of them. Blue. Blue dyed his vision until a form appeared within it. The asphalt was scorched by heat, easily surpassing its kindling point as a wall of blue flames loomed fiendishly before them. It's like Harry Potter, they can't use magic outside school. The boy's heart was still as water, yet his gaze, completely free of misgiving, was raging hotter than flames. Oh, look at that guy. You know he's going to be important, he's a portrait. Anyone who saw it would know what the boy's uniform signified. The first national school for higher magic education, more commonly referred to as the Academy. Trapped by walls of blue flame, the long-haired man reached out to the reflection, intending to take its, take the convenient bystander hostage. <gasps> However, the man who should have been there no longer was. Nothing up his sleeve. The reflection was already walking towards the boy when he was grazed by that fireball. He was really just walking. Normally when fire erupts in one's vicinity, one would be unable to process the situation, shrieking away in dumbfounded terror. Normally fire flying one's way would make one panic, would make one flee screaming. I mean, I know I would. One would either move fiercely or stop moving altogether. One of the two would be the typical reaction for a person. That's why he missed the reflection. He assumed he would still be beside him. That's how weak in existence the reflection actually was. <laughs> Okay, now how do I... Okay, the spacebar gives me the CG. Or, well, shit. Should I say the spacebar removes the text box. The boy gave his eyes a little rub as he realized that the bystander he thought had gotten involved, the reflection had gotten that close. That's true. People get desperate when they're cornered. As he passed, the boy felt the reflection's gaze on his arm. What is that? Unauthorized use of magic. To oh, that's not good. His ring. His magic license. Okay, so you need a license to use magic. I guess that makes sense. I mean, you need a license to drive a car. You need a license to shoot a fireball. You know, makes sense. He seemed to show a bit of interest in the device, which was emitting a warning. What if the streets of kills you? You know, it just if you use magic too much, it just sees you as a threat and just instantly eliminates you. Oh, there was one anime I watched called Maburaho. That was actually pretty funny. It's kind of like a harem anime, you know, kind of edgy stuff, but it's fine. It was about people who could use magic. Like, some people had, like, a certain amount of magic they could use, like, numbers. And whenever they would use up the numbers they would perish. Well, the main character has really powerful magic, but he can only use his, his like, ten times or something like that, his magic, and then he dies. And it's, it's a pretty funny, it's a pretty funny show. The reflection turned his attention, or sorry, his attention, his unaffected eyes to the distance and walked up, carrying himself like a specter and clearly not intending to see the scene through to his conclusion. The boy's attention and unclouded gaze were focused solely on his opponent. Feverishly conviction, sorry, feverish conviction blinded governed his actions. Blindly got, oh my gosh. Sorry, the, the text is weird. It's like the resolution scaled down so it's kind of choppy sometimes. A feverish conviction blindly governed his actions. The same heat as in the flame he specialized in controlling. <laughs> I that's like the police force. Makes sense. Having lost any of the recourse, the long-haired man took up a stance to begin drawing out his magic. Unlike with martial arts, which have standard forms depending on whether they emphasize offense, defense, or range, all magic users have a different stance. Okay. What's important is that the user feels they're in a position most suitable for their magic. Something that just fits.
The gust he unleashed created blades of air pressure that rushed at the boy. The boy was stopped by a wall of wind with no way to avoid its invisible attacks. Countless cuts grazed him before he could react. While not very lethal on their own, the shallow cuts had to be blocked with the arms so as to avoid damage to more fatal areas like his eyes or neck and the blood loss from the grazes would add up over time. The man had lied. Anyone level-headed would be able to figure out what the corner corner rest plan really was. The long-haired man was on the run and his time was limited. The little slices served to draw the boy's attention while the man prepared for his fatal blow. The long hair man focuses long range attacks, bringing forth a new gust of unparalleled accuracy. Like trees filled with an axe, the street lies to the right and left of the boy bent down towards him. <laughs> At the same moment, the long haired man set in motion his trap. He took off like a bullet, challenging the boy. Be simple for the boy to avoid the streetlights, but in that instant, the long haired man can launch at point blank a powerful magic. It's a reckless gamble, but one that's unexpectedly effective. Rather than careful plans, simple tricks like these are much more effective. The long haired man was well aware of how important it is to be decisive in a fight. <laughs> However, that idea, that logic, it required the balance of power between them to be close to equal. Concentrating his five senses in the palm of his hand and releasing that, that was the boy's most effective way to utilize his magic. A wave of heat erupted from the hand he'd slammed to the ground, warping the streetlights that threatened to crush him. The bulls bent like wires, falling down on the long-haired man who'd been trying to take the boy's flank. He avoided them at the last moment, but unluckily for the long-haired man, he'd only dodged the after-effect of the boy's attack. Noises he wasn't used to hearing, crushing, smashing, burning noises rushed past him. The blue flames drew welts behind them as they rushed through a concrete sea, as if an embodiment of the boy's conviction, as if a melody of destruction. Completely stripping the well-paved road, the blue flames swam their way through the ground and brushed the long-haired man's toes. It was all too late for him. The flames flared up around the long-haired man as he drowned out his death cries and probably did their work.
バカ野郎お前は何度言ったらわかるんだ Alrighty, now that we're in the game proper, I should let you know that this game does have adult content. This game is not. This is game is the Steam version, so it does not have adult content. But you can purchase the main game version, which does have adult content, and there will most likely be a patch to patch in the eight scenes or whatever. So just fair warning, you know. There is eight. There is adult content in this game. It's just not available on Steam as of right now. Oh boy, this guy's pissed at us, probably for using magic. You can tell he's mad because, you know, his tie is all like, you know, disheveled. You know, like, you got a five o'clock shadow, half smoked cigarette. Like, I mean, come on. Look at his hair. It's a mess. Not that my hair's any better. It's a natural thing for a father to scold his son, and there are times when it could be even interpreted as an expression of love. Yeah, love. That's why dad reprimanded me in a flash through quieting tones, even amidst all the sirens and watching eyes. I'm sorry. That's why dad reprimanded me in harsh, though quieting tones, even amidst all the sirens and watching eyes. Oh, goody. Not a voice protagonist, so I can finally talk. Sorry, dad. I apologize for my use of magic. <laughs> Both innocent children and proud politicians need to apologize honestly for doing wrong. That said, I didn't particularly like the idea of being criticized for my judgment. Sure, it was wrong to break the rules, but at the time, I had been the only one around to make it so they sure they were being followed. While it's against the rules to use magic outside of the academy, the culprit left me no choice. I had to use it. It's reckless to go up against a person with a gun empty-handed, and that goes double for an outcast without a ring. Depending on how you use it, magic can be far more dangerous than a gun, and that's why mages like us dutifully wear the rings administered to us by the government. <laughs> And wasn't the first time we had an exchange like this, which is why Dad sighed in the same resigned way as he had last time. I gotta put my glasses on, holy shit. People were in danger because of the outcast. Nobody else was around, so I was the only one who could have done something about him. Of course, I don't want to be cut. I want to go... Sorry. <clears throat> of course, I don't want to go cut off... Wait, what? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Of course, I don't want to go out of the way to put myself in danger, but I can't just turn a blind eye to something happening right in front of me. God damn, this text. Can't they make the background solid? Can I change that? Hang on, can I change that? Whoops, how do I... Escape, maybe? No, F1? No. Okay, so how do I open the menu? A... No, not auto mode. B, C... Okay, let's try all the letters. Uh-oh, no, that did something. No, not skip mode. No, 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 no. How do I change it? Okay. No. Okay, I have no idea how to open the menu. Okay, I have no idea how to open the menu. Don't worry about it. Figure it out later. Huh? Well, uh, I, I did fine. Yeah, fine. You're going to get me out of the way. I'm going to get Suddenly the tables have turned. It's all because I tried cramming before the test by pulling an all-nighter, but was thoroughly defeated by sleepiness instead. How truly terrifying is this enemy of mine? The Sandman. The Sandman, really? Oh, yeah, Sandman. It was my responsibility to stand up for myself after losing that battle, but, but even I could tell how obvious I was avoiding meeting Dad's gaze. As I uselessly hacked my brain for reinforcements, help came from an unexpected outside source. Ma, Ma, Yuji-san, 
それくらいで許してあげたらどうですか Hello, ma'am. What is your name? I like your little pins. コーヒーマキカ。ヒギシャのハンソーはワタノガ。はい。ついさっきご奏者に乗せて出発しました。そうか。ならバーストに撤収命令を出しておいてくれ。俺は現場担当の人間と話してくる。Dad put on a cigarette and a portable ashtray. アルト、お前には書で話を聞かにはならん。そこで少し待ってろ。What if I don't want to? Sure thing. Okahina and Tower will be home late. Oh, we can go home together, right? That's not gonna. It's cool, right? Sana. Oh, my no, Kyoryuk Shidai da. What does that mean? That'll be no problem then. I'm used to police questioning. Bakaya Roma. I turned around and approached an officer who was talking on a car radio. If it's anything like last time, we'll be leaving here in about five minutes. Haruto, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but I'm not sure what I'm saying. I'm not sure what I'm saying. Yes, I know. Sorry for all the trouble, Yumi sensei. I really do regret having to disobey instructions. I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 No, don't do that. Please, I need my grades. I, I don't see how that follows. Abusing your authority like that isn't plain fair. Not only a colleague of mine, but Dad's burst. The Bureau for Unregistered Magic Regulation and Suppressive Tactics. A kind of national police force. Yumi Sensei is also a powerful caster who teaches at the academy. Okay, so she's a teacher. Makes sense. We call her Yumi Sensei, you moron. Oh, my alarm went off, sorry. It had me wake up in time to record this quick look. But the game came out earlier than expected, so. I'm indebted to her both publicly and privately, so she really has my respect. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Come to think of it, that passerby said the same sort of thing. I was a bit busy at the time, so I hadn't paid him much attention, but it wasn't really the sort of time. Th sorry, it's the sort of thing you'd say to a complete stranger, was it? I mean, I don't know. Well, no matter how much I can ponder it. With my brain, the only conclusion I'm gonna be able to reach is he was kind of a strange guy, wasn't he? Haruto kun, hanashi kiteru? I am, I am. I won't forget your advice, Sensei. Mo! Tsugi mata jiken wo koshtara oto san ni kitsuku shikatte morau kara ne? You already did. Understood. Ato, kimi dake kadai o fuyashimasu. That's not fair. <sighs> Understood. As I watched Yumi Sensei walk over to where my dad was, I thought about how I'd probably still do the same thing if I found myself in this situation again. It's hard not to, right? Old habits die hard. Oh, who's this woman? Let me guess. It's a childhood friend, right? The voice was loud enough to reach my ears, even considering the noise around us. It's her. When I turned around, I saw an unfamiliar girl sending an ardent look my way, glaring to tell it like it was. Uh, me? You talking to me? I searched my memories, but still couldn't recall her face. I looked around in a hurry, thinking it might have made an embarrassing mistake, but there was no one else in her line of sight. Huh? You wouldn't have to be angry at me, would you? Why would you be angry at me? I continued my search as I spoke to her, determined to find her in my memory somewhere. Since she's wearing the academy uniform, I'm at least relatively certain she goes to school there with me. But no matter how far back I thought, I just I couldn't place her. Maybe she's got one of those faces. Pretty sure she was upset about something, but she still hadn't followed up after her first sentence, so I really had no way of knowing what it was. Hey, I'm a magic user, not a mind reader. 
What should I do? While I was at a loss, the girl had taken something out of a small pouch in her waist. It was a notebook. She thrust it out in front of me so that I could see it. The clasp that it was supposed to hold it shut was torn open. Uh, it looks a little dirty and the clasp is coming off. <laughs> what? I'm just saying the obvious here. I couldn't say anything tactful and instead merely stated the situation as I saw it. When I did, the girl opened her mouth, which had been shut tight, sucked in the breath, and said, I'm sorry? Why? Divine punishment, punishment by an existence transcending mankind. Met it off for some sin committee, in other words, the wrath of God. I went over to the phrase in my mind with no idea what she meant by the words, and by the time I realized it, she had already left. An omen, perhaps? Yeah, it's probably nothing. Did I do something to her? Should I go after her and try to figure out what she meant? I mean, what do I do? My dad called out from behind me while I was asking myself that. Haruto, I might meet with divine punishment, Dad. If that happens, I'm leaving Hina to you, okay? I couldn't get that girl out of my head. Even while following my dad's instructions. I mean, how could you not? If God does punish me, I'm sure I'll deserve it. You know. Since he'd be the one to decide that, I doubt he'd be wrong. We're back! We returned home after my questioning. There's no one here. Shortly after that, I sent the green in the living room. I heard the powdered white footsteps heading our way. <laughs> oh, we have a sister. <laughs> Dad handed his jacket to Hina and loosened his tie, heading into the living room. Look, I don't need your lecturing, okay? I know that. Sorry, Hina. I was planning on coming home earlier and helping you with dinner, too. Gotcha. I'll make it up to See you sometime, all right? <laughs> oh, that laugh is adorable. I'd say let's hear it again, but I don't know how to do that. I mean, I'm saying everyone, or at least. A lot of the strong people can use magic, right? So it's like, I would imagine that someone going rogue and just causing destruction would just be an absolute nightmare. That makes sense. Turning on the TV after dinner, we found the news reporting on today's incidents. Now this background, this black background would have gone so much better if this, all the text was just like this. So what was the culprit's motive anyway? I'm your son! I'm not a civilian. You know, what if it is though? What if what if I do worry about it? You know, it keeps me up at night. I mean I guess so, but What? I wasn't prepared at all, so the best I could do was clutch the item thrown at me to my chest. The distinct scent of leather tickled my nose. The people aren't fond of the scent, but I don't mind it at all. I right, bring it on. Suck the baseball glove on my left hand, punch it once, and fall dead outside. Playing ball with dad. Uh, brings back fond memories. Like this? I tried to place my elbow higher when I threw the ball, like you said. 
When the ball left my fingers, it drew a gentle arc in the air and fell into Dad's glove. I don't ever play catch with you, though, so I don't think I'm gonna get hurt. I mean, they have, they have a condition called tennis elbow, so I mean, just because you're not getting physically hit there doesn't mean you can't still suffer injuries. Yeah, yeah, that's why I had to stop playing and went through all that heartbreak. I know, I know. But I'm not the ace of the team. Carrying his fight on my shoulders. I'm not even on a team, in fact. I like being active, generally. And it doesn't bother me to keep my dad company like this. I'm sure he's very stressed out of work and all. But I'm not such a dedicated son that I give him a whole year to fulfill his long abandoned dreams or anything. <laughs> Hmm. You know, I wonder if they ever think about what a world without magic would be like, you know? Things weren't so easy going all the time. Not this again. Sure, I'm probably less interested in sports in general, but I think that's kind of unrelated. Athletes only get attention because they can pull off things most people can't. That is, most people would give up on running 100 meters in 9 seconds or hitting an out-of-the-park home run before they even tried. People are excited to see others achieve things they could really never do. But that was the world before people learned about magic. With it, you could do almost anything. Well, just because I'm a caster doesn't mean I can do everything. I mean, I can't hit an out-of-the-park home run, for instance. Right now, the best I could do would probably be throwing a fireball pitch. You know, but when you look back at just a few years ago, that's still an incredible accomplishment. Naturally, I don't remember much about the impact magic had on society at the time, but I can easily guess it was immeasurable. If you go out into town nowadays, it's not unusual to see casters just walking around wearing their rings. Household rice cookers and the like having magic functions too. I mean, to put it simply, people have gotten used to fairy tale magic that they once thought only existed in fiction. People really can become accustomed to the most incredible things, which is something I'm most likely to be impressed by than an out-of-park home run. Hey, I mean, I think about the things that need to be thought about. Hey, Dad, what did you think when you learned about magic? Ah, I imagine it would be hard to accept, you know. Don't you think you were a bit too quick to accept it? What do you mean? Well, you still don't like magic, do you? That's right. I I guess it wouldn't. How come the crime rate has increased? Oh my god, is this guy Yuji from Grisaya, just like older? Kind of looks like him. Like wanted to shoot it if you have a gun? Onajidana. I guess it's not fun if you can hit a home run, but you can't show it to anyone, right? You're not wrong. I'm not like that. I don't go out of my way to do anything I don't have to. It's not like I think of myself as anything special. I don't want to go through anything scary, and I don't like pain. But if someone is in trouble, and I'm the one who can help them, then I have to. That's just how I think. 
I mean, imagine the guilt. How I just left the situation. What if someone, like, died? And I just sat there and refused. You know, it's like the bystander effect where you just assume somebody else is going to come by and help them. And that's not always what happens. I saw a video, like, years ago of a woman who was, like, in the middle of the street, like, injured. And cars were just driving around her. No one stopped. No one stopped. No one cared because everyone assumed that somebody else was going to help her. But if I just turn a blind eye, I might as well be as bad as a criminal. I don't want that. I don't have the guts to just stand back and let people be hurt. How am I supposed to stop these people if I don't use my magic? I know, I already try not to use magic outside as much as possible, but... I'll put one more effort into it. I mean, I'd feel bad if you got in trouble because of me. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a mistake. You probably should. Ooh, an apple. What kind? I like the really sweet apples. Those are really good. You know, stuck her head out of the one and waved at us. Got it. We'll be there. As I was taking off my glove, Dad thrust his hand out to me. The glove's still on. Last he wound up and released the ball, but he put a little too much strength into it, and his trajectory veered off a little. I stretched out my right arm right away, but the ball slipped out from my glove and hit the ground. Aww. No. I still should have been able to catch it. I guess I just haven't been practicing enough. Oh man, I'll never make it to the Nationals at this rate. With an exasperated chuckle, Dad walked up to me, holding his glove. Arto, what? What? You know, when Dad does his baseball metaphor, it somehow just all makes sense. Alright. I don't think I really understood what Dad meant. But when he went inside after that, and when I thought about Hina sitting in front of that apple waiting for us, I really couldn't spend more time thinking too deeply about it. I cocooned myself up in my blanket like a caterpillar. Unfortunately, I would not turn into a butterfly today. Maybe tomorrow. In this season, the cold is harsh at night. It's not so bad when you're under the covers, but I'd wake up if I kicked my blanket off. Oh man, my heat went out today. It was like 50 degrees in this house. It was so cold. Luckily, it kicked back on. We had we had an issue with like the power went out and the breaker, or not the breaker, like the thermostat got reset. And I guess we just didn't know how to reset it. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it's a thing. Mmm. It had been about 10 minutes since I got into bed. It was about the time I should have been getting sleepy. Ha! <laughs> 10 minutes, huh? Boy, if only I could be so lucky. When I emptied my head, all of a sudden I found myself remembering the events of the day. That's when you think about shit. Sorry, when you think about stuff. When you're lying in bed at night. I studied like usual at the academy, but ran into an outcast on my way home. And a mysterious guy. And a girl, too. Come to think of it. What was the deal with that girl? Now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of feel like I saw her before that, but then again, I kind of don't, you know? She was wearing the academy uniform, so maybe I just passed her by on campus. I mean, that sounds like it must be right. But then again, it kind of doesn't. I tried pretty seriously to remember where I'd seen her. 
but any sense of purpose is powerless before the Sandman, and before I knew it, I'd fall into deep slumber. Unlock Senri Root Day 1. See, now, the interesting thing about this VN is that you can play the days in different perspectives. So it's kind of cool, right? So like, I can, I'm assuming Senri is the girl that we don't know of. We don't know who she is, so. I'm assuming we're going to see things from her perspective. About episode jump. As you advance the story, new scenes will become available. Oh my god, look at all those fucking icons. Freaking icons. After the scene unlock notifications, you can choose a new scene on the episode jump screen. The episode jump screen can be used at any time. Moving to a new scene halfway through a different one will allow you to restart the scene you're in the middle of. You can freely choose which parts of the story you'd like to read next. Oh, hang on. Rat in a nightless city. How do I see Senri's stuff? I'm trying to select the reading route. Oh, these are red scenes. Unlocked unread scenes. Okay, that makes sense. I should have probably read this before I did this. Okay, here we go. This is Senri. In her countless haphazardly placed neon signs, voices called out ceaselessly, persistent in their attempts to draw in business from the streets. <sighs> this town's the same as always. It was the same as what I saw every night in the entertainment district. Passed by them without altering my pace, paying their exchange no mind. Until the woman I felt... Until the woman fell to the ground in front of me, apparently shoved by the man in the street. The man appeared pleased to have resolved the situation. She certainly was aggressive with her work. As soon as she realized she was blocking my path, she put her work face right back It's a trap. She seemed to notice something and straightened up, maintaining the uncomfortable proximity she gained with me. Go see a doctor just in case. I know it. She was lying. Body touch is a key point. But I don't have to use my body as a weapon. People in her line of work pay a lot of attention to the people they see on the streets. I've been here for a year now, so even if we're not well acquainted, it's only natural that she'd recognize me. There's somewhere I've got to be. It was an unproductive use of my time. I'll have to take the other road the next time I come by here. There's relaxation to be had even in the entertainment district with passions whirling through the air. The first of which could be the hard-working vending machine that sits to the side of those busy streets watching over the crowds impartially. It's weak, but it's somehow pitiful. Nothing again. Back to square one. I took the can of Reed Elephant full of amino acids and vitamins. Strongest beverage, definitely. That's what they say. Tipped it back. It's not as refreshing as a vegetable drink, but it does the work. Oh man, I want V8 now. It deserves its reputation as a drinkable IV. I saw pieces of the rich chicken I'd eaten on my escape stuck between my teeth, but my thirst was rapidly quenched, at least. 
I took a rest, gazing passively at the ground, blackened with gum and garbage, and at the crowd built crowded buildings above. When I drained the can of half of its contents, a shadow fell before me. A man, a suit I remembered seeing a few minutes ago, lay before me. He had fallen to the ground, taking signs and recycling bins with him. <laughs> Perhaps he'd hit his shoulder when he fell. The man was curled up, but conscious. Was it dislocated or broken? Either way, it wouldn't kill him. Tensei,ボラ、ボラ、見たかよ、シダ。テスタモの、ジャイアントスイング、見たか。何言ってんだよ。教会で一発もらった分のストレス解消してるだけっすよね、竹丸さん。ミッキー君は男の生理だったんだ
I don't want to go to the trouble of opening my mouth, so I gave him a non-committal nod and stuck the hand I'd placed on my burned coat into my pocket. I turned around and looked the men over. What are you doing? You hitting on me? When I was at work years ago, I had a guy hit on me. It was pretty funny. He was he was drunk, probably. He was like, "You're so beautiful, man." Like, yeah, I know. I bought a reedy elephant for everyone present, setting the cans in the ground. You lose your temper when you're thirsty, don't you? Yeah, so... so... Disney. I put one to the cheek of the man in the suit, still curled up, curled up in a ball. He twitched and looked up timidly at my face. There's one for you, too. I left the area, taking advantage of the sudden silence. No one else called out to me on my way. An apartment above a business establishment, I unlocked my door and stepped in, only to find the butt of a trespassing caterpillar in the perfect position for a good kick. Oh, don't kick the caterpillar. Hello. What's your name? あたしが暇すぎて新作のモバイルゲームをリセットマラソンした回数。リセットマラソンっていうのはね、初期ボーナス召喚で強キャラ出るまで赤消しを繰り返すことを指すんだ。I know what a reroll is, okay? I'm not an idiot. 無駄でしょ。ゲームを始めるためのゲームだよ。びっくりするよね。これ以上無駄な行為ないって思ったでしょ。you know what? I can't. I can't argue that. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> ha ha ha. Ah,すごいいただきました。ちょっとこの放置プレイに興奮を隠しきれませんね。She squirmed in those seductive hot pants of hers, shaking her hips as though she was exercising. 私ってばほら、基本無料だから。でもキャンペーン中に課金すれば、SM装備もらえちゃう。ちょっと基盤だのでも喜んで飲んじゃう。飲み干しちゃう。SM equipment? Really? What game are you playing? Ha! もっと高く押し上げた方がしやすい。これ完全に入ってるよね。If even if it's not on paper, since I'm paying your rent, this counts as my room, doesn't it? God, I love this game. Listen again. Stand up for a minute. My loitering landlady crawled closer and smiled like a Cheshire cat. What is wrong with your eye? She curled herself around my legs like some sort of nightmare creature. Dude, there's no way we're not screwing this lady. There's, like, there's no way she doesn't have a scene, right? As she made me drag her whole body weight over to the couch, she seemed the very picture of sloth. 
箱うわ乱暴にされてるせんちゃんにりょなられてあたし目覚めちゃうサードアイ海岸しちゃう What is、like、more than the other two? Me, heart, Good, if I poke it, maybe it'll close. Okay, I refuse to support her own weight even as she bumped against all my furniture on her way to the couch. I tossed her on top of it, she made it sound like a squealing piglet. The word pout hardly applied here, but I silently set her up without pointing out that piece of information. People can ruin themselves spending too much time lying down. One should limit their relaxation to the times when the brain is sending out signals of fatigue, but this sloth will keep relaxing for far longer than she needs to. But if you plant your feet on the ground again, you can regain your nationality. Nationality? Regain your nationality, but you'll probably regain your rationality better. I know it's faster at this point to just sit around myself. I did not. I haven't spoken to you since the day before yesterday. Agaha is acquainted with a good number of unauthorized casters in the entertainment district. Outcasts, in other words. She manages a business through this network that offers work that, while temporary and borderline illegal, pays extremely well. Like drug running. Even if there are crimes that could only be committed by an outcast, it's hard to imagine those leading any profitable business. How then does this work turn a profit, I wonder? Well, the biggest reason is probably the particular position outcasts enjoy. Regular police officers can't stand against their power. That alone makes them incredibly troublesome. A culprit caught in the act could easily escape arrest before Burris has time to arrive at the scene. It's a different story when they commit serious crimes like murder, robbery, or arson, but the police will give up on investigating most minor offenses. After all, there's a precedent of outcasts endangering crowds of bystanders during their escapes. I guess business thrives only because the way things are currently balanced really it could be destroyed at any moment. Are you a prostitute? I guess I can be shrewd sometimes. As she makes her money from selling information, she rarely has to do any work herself, and she seems careful enough that no one who gets in trouble can bring it back to her. I'm glad your work seems to be going well for you. Just stop getting me involved in those connections of yours, the criminal ones. I'm talking about two days ago. I only went there because you said some personal friends were in trouble and I just had to. And I find your pals playing tag with Burst. Two of them got away in the commotion I caused during my escape, by the way. Oh? Mm. She looked at me as if to say what about it. With no regards for the crime, she'd asked me to bet for her. Still, we'd never come into an agreement if we keep this up. That's just what I guys like. I have to put up with that behavior if I want information from her. I was in the city center of my own business, but those two punks sneaking around in that parking lot. Did that have anything to do with you? Eh? Ah, I'm not in this business, Agaha. Fill me in here. No, that's enough. I just wanted to know a Tori's connection to the vehicle thievery, but I think I've got to figure it out. <clears throat> they were probably after the magic converters and hybrid cars. Of course they were. The latest magic technology would be involved in such a large-scale parts manufacturing, and I hear Tories monopolize the market. They could check from outside the car using a magic detector and do the deed if they get a response. I bet that's what was going on. 
Rosanna was probably killing two birds with one stone to go after valuable toy products while the treasure hunt and less secure vehicles. As I thought about all that with my eyes still pointed at Ageha, she smiled languidly, probably thinking there was some other reason for my gaze. <sighs> you only have the one life your parents gave you. Make sure to treat it with care. Fiona. Fiona. She's perfect. Kosaki, Fiona, Annabelle. My only impression of that woman is that I have no impression. Likewise, I had no impression of her comment, so I just nodded instead of responding. Your appointment's chatter didn't start yesterday. Don't answer that. I only do what I need to after all. I replied in no time. A wise man hides a leaf in a forest, and an outcast hides it in the entertainment district. Agai owns a building that's perfect for hiding out in. And you're much cleverer than somebody with no self-awareness. No. Much more importantly, Aki. The conversation was going nowhere good, so I cut it short. I narrowed my eyes when she wrapped her arms around herself and gave me a sickening look. She listlessly headed over to the refrigerator and returned, carrying a Tupperware container as big as a sink. I opened the plain lid and a simple Japanese scent came from the container. I grabbed a soup spoon and casually brought some to my lips. No thoughts in particular. It's not really good or bad, just kind of blah. It's a much more pedestrian flavor than I expected. I can really taste the pork flavor. It's not bad. I'm sorry, what? They say that you can glean someone's true personality from how they cook. Is that really true? It was plain, so, so very plain. It was low effort home cooking with leftover ingredients. Not something I'd pay money for, and not something I'd risk dangerous favors to obtain. But I swallowed it. It went down just fine. It was the ultimate average cooking, and eating it, I felt awfully relaxed. When I realized that I'd put half, way half of the soup, I happened to look up and notice that muddy smile of hers just in front of me. You've got a coat hug, hugging fetish, I see. A coat hugging fetish? What the hell is a coat hugging fetish? That's not a fetish. That's terrorism. Having glanced at my shoulder, Agaha looked over at the tears in my coat and muttered, Time for that then. Never screwed up, sorry. Yeah, I've never screwed up one of her favors before, so she's probably not worried I'm injured. 
擦り切れたりした生地を自然に修復できるマギがあるのお蔵入りしちゃってたからこの機械に試そっと you can't, you can't just sew it. Do as you like. あ,あ余計にひどくなるんだろうとか心配してるバッカだねセンちゃん自然な糸のつなぎ目がセールスポイントだよワゴン品だけど Give it back by tomorrow. I really like that coat, you understand? With a well, then, I'll get our maid to leave my room. Tai shita koto ja nain da ro kedo. Sen chan ga modotte kuru mai ni inter hon renda chu ga ita yo. Probably just somebody like you up to some mischief. Banal mischief. Jikan wo akete kekuk san kai. Three times. You didn't answer the door? You could have at least made a note of what they looked like. Sugi ko so what te omotta toko de yanjatta. Sen chan no stalker j a n a i Probably. Probably the collector after you. Collector? Oh, ring gari no. Te yamete yo koai koto yu no. The number of times this visitor came made me think they were up to no good. It definitely stunk of some ill will, but since I had no way to confirm the truth, I decided not to think about it. I nodded, her nonchalant words of party not leaving any sort of impression on me. Collecting the Tupperware, now empty of a single drop of broth or grain of rice, Agi has took her leave. Okay, so we're on day two. <clears throat> we're on day two. How do I get to- okay, there we go. God, so bad. Unseen face. What's this one? Oh, I just had it. Damn. I just had it. Here we go. Effect of the rings. Uh, let's go back to uh, the other guy here. Haruto. Ani-chan. Asa da yo. Wow, she's adorable, isn't she? Look at that face. Huh? I felt a small hand shaking me through my blanket. When I opened my eyes, a smiling Hina was there before me. Ohayo. Love Hina. Yeah, but if I don't want it to be morning, yet, what should I do? I suppose. What a great idea, my brilliant little sister. Good night then. Oh, no skin off my back, go and do it. Ah, Hina. Hina crawled into my bed with me. Her sweet girlish scent tickled my nose. You can't. It's not right for siblings to do these things. <laughs> this is wrong, but. I feel like it's also wrong to shake off your arms. What do I do? Good night. It's not what it looks like. Whoa. It's not what it looks like. Dad and I both froze over when our eyes met. Dad, it's not what you think. We're just fooling around. Okay, that's not even. Worse, man. From his face, I could tell he was thinking something like, I can't believe I had to see this so early in the morning. Dad said this and left the room right after. We've just disappointed our, our father. That's enough, Hina. If I were late for school after this, is a misunderstanding. I wouldn't be able to face Dad tomorrow. I'm not gonna be able to face him anyway, so... I decided to slip out from Hina's arms and change into my uniform. 
Finally, we're going to school, right? People want that. Oi, Haruto! Hey, you, Ak Akatsuki. Morning, Akatsuki. As Hina and I headed to the academy, we were stopped by a familiar voice. Akatsuki-san, ohayo! Hina-chan, oha! <laughs> you should have seen this morning. Akatsuki jogged up to us and started walking beside me. Oh, you know me, protecting that peace. It's a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it? I only caught one outcast, unless he was planning on taking over the world. I don't think I had that much of an effect on the planet. All I can do is try to correct whatever wrongs are being committed around me. Nothing more, nothing less. I can only hope to chase those... Sorry, to change those few things, even as the world continues to turn. I don't think anything more of it. <laughs> yeah, probably. I Akatsuki started speaking in an elated voice like he always does. Outcast to Tsukamaeru koto nanka yori, motto kakyu teki ni kaiket su beki mondai wa sekai ni sanseki shiteru. Senso to ka, kiga to ka ne. Sore ra ni taisho dekiru hazu no kengen o atayerare ta leader tachi wa taksan ite. Message to shite no segi wa hashin shi tsukeru kedo. Sore de mondai wa kaiket shita ka ne? You have the greenest goddamn eyes I've ever seen in my life. My god, they're like staring into emeralds. I think the scales are a little different here. It's not like I can do anything about war. You know, that's the kind of backwards thinking that this country is going into the crapper, man. Can't do anything because we're students. What does that matter? We can still save people. We can still right wrongs and, you know... でも同じ無力な行為だとしても、君のように行動を起こして小さな影響でも世界に対して与え続ける方がはるかに意味があると僕は思うね。It's the little things that build up into the big things. 行動を起こし続けていけば、いつかこっちの本気度が伝わるかもしれない。Yeah, maybe. Get across to who exactly? Atsuki pointed up at the sky and said, "God." 神様に. Oh, really? To God? thought you were joking. To God, huh? True, he may be the only one who could wipe war and famine off the face of the earth. Well, he already thinks we're sleeping together. I mean, probably already thinks we're the worst piece of crap on the face of the earth. <laughs> Yeah, he's a hard ass, but I love him. He wasn't there yesterday, but there have been times when Atsuki and I both got in trouble and were chewed out by my dad. You make it sound like I'm so special, but you're really not one to talk, Akatsuki. Fundamentally? That's uh, not, not really a bad thing, though, is it? We're a good role model, Look, he's made it seem like it's all my fault. Not sure how I feel about that. That's what he that's what he says, but uh, Tatsuki does help me out a lot it's all the same. He's always looking at everything around this one. I can always see what's in front of me. Makes me want to ask him if he really doesn't have the same values as me after all. Hmm. But just then... It's a hoodlum. An enraged shout cut through the quiet particular to winter morning such as this. An irate man had grabbed the arm of a habit-clad woman, and it sure didn't look like just a friendly argument. Sorry, Hina, could you hold my bag? 
I know, but I can't just walk away. Not saving the day, man. I'm just helping someone in need. Quit calling me that. どうしてさ、君にぴったりのいい名前だと思うけどね。世界を救うのはいつだって政治家じゃない。神様も知らんぷり。だったらもう残りは一つ。それはヒーローだ。It's not right to get violent with a woman. You're not playing fair. Huh? The man who had clearly lost his cool was obviously unamused by our sudden involvement. You want to die? I mean, not really. It's not on the list. I don't know what your relationship is, but it's pretty easy to tell that it isn't a normal one. Why don't you calm down and let her go for now, okay? Perhaps agreeing with me, the man released the girl. If there's some disagreement here, I'll gladly mediate. Sometimes talking to a third party can... Okay, well, I guess the mediating will have to wait. He brought some object made of metal above his head and swung it down with incredible speed. If that hit me, I'd crack, crack my skull right open. He must have been so enraged that he couldn't even understand that. <laughs> His arm was stopped just before finishing its downward swing. Akatsuki's arm had reached out from behind me to grab the man's wrist. No matter how much strength he continued to put into it, the man couldn't get his arm to reach my head. I didn't want to dodge, as it would feel like running away. Besides, I thought you'd stop him, Akatsuki. Hi, hi. The man now appeared to be even more enraged. Maybe he didn't like kids so much younger than him getting in his way. Still, I couldn't sympathize with him. He was the one in the wrong. I know you've got your own perspective, and from that standpoint, you might be in the right. But it's definitely not right to do things like this. If you use violence to get your way, no one will ever agree with you. You aren't playing fair. Like a really short tie. Maybe just have a really long shirt. That's probably what it is. So then as he noticed our uniform, the man seemed to finally hesitate for the first time. So you got Maho Tatini Odosno, Kiga Hikeruketo. Ojisan no dohoni Bokuranga, Gachatara Donarka, Wakaru de I doubt there's anyone around here who hasn't seen the students in academy uniform, and it's common knowledge that the academy trains casters. You know, imagine how frustrating it is to have like people who can use magic but you can't. Like, I would imagine people would be very upset. Some people would get violent. And people who can use magic. I mean, I, I could sympathize with them for sure. I mean, seeing people do things, you know, that seem like normal everyday things for them and that you struggle to do anything with, that you, can, you can't do, you know, it makes people very envious. The man spat and ran off, his profile looking rather lonesome. He acted quickly when he understood the position he was in. Stop calling me that. Not a superhero, man. I'm just a human. Oh, hello, sister. 
Sending an accusatory glare Akatsuki's way, I held out a hand to the habit-clad woman who had sunk to the ground. Are you alright? And before I go any further, remember Sister Mishima from Princess Eventually. You have a lot to live up to, ma'am. You know, you're under the microscope here. Oh, we're fine. I don't know your circumstances, but maybe you should go to the police just to be safe. Justice keeps no time. I checked the time and found we no longer had even a minute to spare. Oh crap, man. I can't even say goodbye to the nun. Okay, come on. Come on! Nuns don't wear stuff like that. Uh, is that... Is that church regulation? I'm sorry, we're in a hurry, so... I mean, isn't the whole point of, a, of like, the nun garb to not show skin? You know, to be like... Not, you know, so they don't get like, earthly desires and all that? I don't know. Sure, that sounds, about, sounds right, right? I keep telling you. Never mind. I ran towards the academy even as I protested the nickname. Myself aside, I couldn't let Hina be late. And she could have just went on her own, but yeah, whatever. We ran as hard as we could. The academy's gates would shut in five minutes, and while we still could get inside after that, of course, we'd be doomed to be marked tardy. Hina, are you alright? Right when the academy's buildings were about to appear before us, Hina, who had the least stamina, started lagging behind. <laughs> this is why I lift her up on her back and carry her the whole way. It'd be wrong for us to leave you behind and save ourselves. We won't abandon you, Hina. Bend down in front of her before she collapsed. Quick, get on my back. I'll carry you, Hina. Oh, come on. You had a Pop-Tart and some orange juice. You're not heavy to me, Hina. It's Big Brother's job to protect his little sister. I am her, and you want to carry her? Come on. I made sure Hina was snug against my back, of course, before mustering up everything I had for one last spurt. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm out of shape. Oh. I could see the academy gate right before me, but my limit was approaching just as fast. I'll be okay. Don't worry about me. You go on. Sorry, Hina. Look, this is as far as I go. My whole lower back was trembling. My whole lower body was screaming. My forehead was wet with sweat despite the season. And the final nail in the coffin was the hill before the gate. It robbed me of all my strength. We're out of time. You go on ahead without me, Hina. I'll be okay. Hina-chan, go. Garrett and I'm a troublemaker. It'll be fine. Akatsuki, I leave Hina in your hands. Akatsuki, having convinced Hina to move on, headed through the gate with her, immobilized. All I could do was watch them go. Whew. I finally caught my breath and recovered slightly from the fatigue in my legs. However, it was too late. The gate had already closed. Well, what should I do now? I had but two choices. Accept my tardiness and head inside or just go somewhere else while I was at it. To gallivant about in the middle of the weekday would be quite a departure from the norm. I can't say I was completely against the idea, but if I ran to my dad, I'd have no excuse for him. I should just accept that it's my fate to hear Yumi-sensei scolding. 
Am I hearing things? I thought I heard something like a scream just now. To the right of the gate, around a corner, I couldn't see what was happening from here. I let myself swayed, be swayed by the premonition of danger and headed in that direction, though it was guaranteed to be late anyway. There was no longer need to pay any mind at the time. On my way there, I remembered what had happened a few days ago. During an outdoor lesson, I had been a bit too enthusiastic and lost control of my magic, opening a hole in the wall surrounding the campus. My sense of sound scolding was still fresh in my mind. They're supposed to repair the hole soon, but right now it should only be covered by a sheet. Why can't they use magic to repair the hole? I was suddenly struck by an almost divine flash of insight. I'll go through there. Maybe I could avoid being marked tardy. But I quickly realized hmm, that would be an unlawful breach of protocol. Even if I wasn't found by any of the teachers and didn't end up being marked late, it wouldn't be right. Wouldn't be plain. Fair. Whoa. The hole in the wall was sealed shut as if to ensure me. Ensure me? The hole in the wall was sealed shut as if to censor me from unlawful intentions. The ceiling wasn't entirely unexpected, but I couldn't imagine who would repair a wall with something like that. What is this? A human being was sticking out of the wall. If I told someone about it, they'd probably make fun of me. But it was true. There was nothing I could do about that. To use more exact words, the bottom half of what appeared to be a girl was sticking out from the wall, her legs kicking about as if to embody distress. <laughs> the butt talked. The butt monster used human speech, though I could see no m mouth on it to speak of. I wonder how on earth it forms words. <laughs> Help how exactly? I finally understood the situation. What was before me was not a butt monster, but a girl stuck in the hole in the wall. At my feet was the blue sheet that had probably been covering the hole. I imagine the girl removed it to pass through here, but... Push, you say. There are only so many places I could push to propel her forward. You really mean that? <laughs> I have her permission. Who would have guessed that climbing the stairs to adulthood like this? This girl's in trouble, though, and I'm the only one who can help her. There's no one else here, so I have to do it. I got it. Here I go. I steeled myself. Yeah. Shaking away my idle thoughts, I gave the girl's butt a good shot. <laughs> An unknown sensation spread through my palms, but it was quickly overwhelmed by a very different one. Huh? The girl's legs went flying and her heel connected with my jaw. I'm pushing you. What do you want me to do? What do you mean? What do you, what you just told me? What am I supposed to touch to push you? Sorry. Looks like I was going about this in the wrong way. I could taste blood in my mouth. Well, what do you want me to do then? There's nowhere else to push. I could pull you. She groaned as she tried her best to escape the hole. She could swing her legs just fine, but it didn't look like she'd be extricating herself anytime soon. Extricating? How did you find yourself in the situation anyway? A trial? Getting through this hole? I can't abandon someone in trouble. We'll have to think of a way to get you out of here. When I took the time to collect myself, I noticed something. There was some kind of belt around the girl's waist that looked like a holster for something. My dad's face came to mind for a second, but I can't imagine a normal girl like hers walking around with a handgun. Stay still for a second. Nani? I reached around the girl's waist and searched for the clasp of the holster. I couldn't see where it was, so I had to feel it. Ah, there it is. I'm almost done, so sit still for just a bit longer. Her feet flailed about, 
aiming a good kick at me, but I used my previous experience to move around the wall where she couldn't reach. I got it. Hey, can you get through now? I thought maybe it was the holster that was caught in the hole, not the girl's butt, so I removed it temporarily. <laughs> the girl twisted herself and... Oh, looking good, you could do it. The girl's body was sucked up into the hole, finally disappearing to the other side. That's great, you got out. You all right? Holster! Huh? Oh, sorry. I held the holster out and through the hole and then snatched it away like a cautious beast only after its prey. <laughs> So the footsteps I could hear beyond the wall grew more distant. She's probably headed towards the school buildings now. Well, I had an encounter with a bit of an odd girl, but I should probably be thinking about my own course of action now. I could head through the hole that she did, and if I did, I'd avoid the check at the gate, and I might not be tardy if I could at least make it to class on time. Eh, I best not. It'd be pretty embarrassing if I got stuck, too. Besides, I don't really want to break the rules. I mean, I. I know it's nothing to really worry about, but dishonesty is dishonesty. It's not playing fair at all. Nobody's here. All right, we lucked out. Oh, Haruto, go to go to. Katsuki waved over to me from a line of students on their way to the gym, to where our class would be standing during the assembly. I was surprised that no one was in the classroom. God, we had a Sunday today. Oh, see, ne? Kore ga futsu no gakuen datta ra. Mada shukkez o dotte nai kara chikoku o gomakasu koto mo dekita daro ni. Damn it! Boku ra no daily kiroku wa ringu ni kiroku sarete ru kara. So mo ikanai. Really? That sucks. Even if they didn't, I'd admit I was late. I wouldn't be playing fair. You know what? You gotta stop playing fair, man. The world is not a fair place. You gotta be cutthroat. Deta, deta. Yeah, I know. The assembly began right when I managed to get in place behind Akatsuki. The academy's headmaster rose to the stage and started things off with a greeting. Oh, look at that guy. Inui. I like the, uh, the effect. That's pretty cool. が口調の話ってのは全世界共通で長いんだ。そしてこれまた共通だけど話の中身がない。いや、アイパッチ。ディスパークパイレット。I ま、ほうが我々の常識に組み込まれてから早い。12年になりますね。この魔法が新世代のエネルギーとして注目され、その最前線としてこの島は魔法特区として開発されてきたわけです。以来、世間には魔法が溢れ、利便性が大きく向上しました。魔法と電子工学が融合した技術、マジクトロニクス、通称 the abbreviation Magi originated originally referred to Magitronic technology at large, but now people more often use it to refer to the devices themselves that use the technology. Oh, 
ここにいる皆さんはその未来を背負っているのですあなた方の行動が社会における魔法のあり方を決定づけるのですくれぐれもルールを破らないようにしてくださいあなた方は魔法に選ばれた人間であるがゆえにその選択には相応の思いが伴っているのですだってさ耳が痛いね I'm following the rules. You're allowed to use magic temporarily when you normally wouldn't if there's danger to you or someone around you. The rules and the rules are the same as the rules. 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 How did he know? <clears throat> the headmaster's words brought me back to myself. It was painfully obvious that he was referring to us from the eyes focused on our direction. I apologize, I won't do it again. The headmaster smiled kindly. Oh crap, our exams! I didn't study. Come to think of it, we've got a practical exam in magic tomorrow. Lots of students are really gearing up for it since it could affect their marks a great deal. I guess I'm acting like I usually do, though. The headmaster continued on after that while Akatsuki yawned. The bell rang, signaling the end of class. Now is the oasis in the middle of our educational desert. Lunch break. Hi, so it's a kill, a cocomade. Maho den dorit to strukti no hote ski a test on your car. Chant over it, eh? I've already written it down, Sensei. I'm a good student. <sighs> you could feel the release of tension spread through the classroom. I wasn't trying to pay it any particular mind, but the same sort of relaxed noise that I'd uttered echoed around me. Sate, do ni ka ko ni ka kyo mo zenhan sen o nori kitta wake da kedo. Half time wa itsumo dori shokudo de i no kai? Yeah, I mean, I've got to meet Hina there. She's got half my lunch. Uraya mashi i kagiri da yo. Hitori ko no boku wa dou agai temo. Imoto no tezukuri bento wa taberare nai kora ne. It's okay. I won't either. I don't have a little sister. I don't have a sister, period. I don't mind sharing with you if you want some. Aruto, Kimi wa nani mo wakatte nai. Hahaoya kara Valentine choco moratte ureshi kai? Munashi dake sa. I think I'd be happy to get chocolate from my mom. I don't know though, since I don't have one. Just like you. Inakte mo sozo wa dekiru sa. もらったのが母親からの一個だけとかだったらその虚しさは計り知れないね。At least someone cares. I really have no memories of my mother. She passed away right after giving birth to Hina, but I know so little about her that I can't even really be sad about that. Oi, Kokuru! If anything, she should be fortunate in that case. One of her classmates approached us. The rumor. Worst waste of a cute face. What? I haven't heard anything about that. Dame da yo harto. Uchini komote arekore kangai denide. Moto sotoni antena mukenaito. Ma Come to think of it, there was a pretty big uproar about that, wasn't there? It was the first time we had to evacuate the school for something other than drill. あれ、実は彼女が未知の生命体を生み出す実験をしたせいだって噂だよ。他にも休み時間は空に向かって何かをつぶやいてるとか、彼女の恨みを買ったものは恐ろしい天罰が下るとか。あ、そんなことは知
男子には人気あるんだけど女子にはあまり評判が良くないらしいいや女性の嫉妬っていうのは怖いねまったくだ可愛ければ大抵のことは許してやればいいのにな実は何を隠そう俺も結構いいなと思ってる人間の一人だハルトはどうだあ、oh, um... I'm fan 001 of her fan club. <laughs> There's no one bigger fan than me. Well, I've never met her. It's not right to be just producing any unknown life forms, though. I mean, be able to make life, though, would be pretty crazy. Dame ka. Ma, rival was kunai ni kosta kota wa nai kara na. Ate, so ja ne e n da yo. Ori ga kita no wa atarashi u a s a Oh, a new rumor. Atarashi u a s a Kore, o f r e k o na. Hiro ga tara mazu i rashi. I sort of feel like I'm getting an inside look at how exactly rumors spread. I mean, don't tell anybody. Okay, I won't. Tells, it, tells everybody anyway. I mean, I sidelined him in here though, since it looked like he really wanted to tell someone. Might as well be me. Big Me, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Oh, ring. The magic license everyone who can use more than the most basic magic user must wear. Its basic functions include assistance with magic use and it serves as identification for entering certain facilities. This academy, for instance. It's also equipped with a sensor that sends data to the government whenever its wearer performs magic so as to prevent its misuse. With that connotation attached to it, it's not really something people can casually remove. You gotta fill out a bunch of forms if you so much as lose it, too. So people see rings as a violation of human rights and don't wear them because of that. Makes sense. Those people are called outcasts, unauthorized mages, and they cause trouble occasionally. Tolare t a t e Mosako. Ah, Collector n i a r a t a n j a n a i k a t e the Collector. Who's the Collector? Haruto. Kimi wa Honto ni Jibun no Shubi Hai Igai wa Zarudane. Ea, Kimi ni Hanaste Nakata Boku no Sekininka. コレクターってのはどこからか現れてはキャスターを襲いリングを奪っていく謎の人物についた名前だよ魔法で相手を行動不能にしてからリングを奪い去っていくらしいぜ That's not right. That's not playing fair. As if he cares, right? でもコレクターが襲う相手っていうのは魔法犯罪者だけって話だった気がするけど Committing magic crimes そういった意味ではコレクターはもしかしたらハルトと同じ種類の人間かもね悪事を前にしていても立ってもいられなくなるタイプ Maybe I don't see people's rings though What does that mean do you think? そう勲章とか俺はこれだけ敵を倒したんだぞっていう証とかなんとも賠償な正義の味方だけど Can't stop people like the outcast from yesterday with just words, and if you need to use magic to stop them, you are sacrificing innocent bystanders. So, if that's the reason this collector is doing such things, I'm not sure that his actions can be called wrong. But there's no reason to steal rings. If he's acting with some goal of his own in mind and not just to protect the people around him, he's not playing fair. Haruto 3 brings a lot of good arguments to the table, I'll have you know. Where can I find this collector? Akatsuki. What, you won't even listen? I'm not a swindler. Just listen. Now that one of the victims is an academy student, it's, it's kind of our business, don't you think? So, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a little bit of a ring. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a little bit of a ring. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a little bit of a ring. So, what, I'm just supposed to sit back here and watch as my classmates and friends get taken by the collector? I don't think so. Akatsuki, let's go to the entertainment district after school.
はい出たよ出ました出しました分かっちゃいたけどねそれでも言わざるを得ない君は本当にハルトだね I'm the one and only baby of course I am ハルトと表現する以外に言葉が思いつかなかったんだよ僕の目の前で起きるこの現象をねなんだお前ら事件調べに行くのかだったら何か分かったら教えてくれよ絶対誰にも言わねえから、yeah, right. ああ君は信用できる人物だからね Didn't he tell us the rumor? 何か分かったら真っ先に知らせようオッケー頼んだぞじゃあ俺飯食ってくるわ He left the classroom looking pretty satisfied with the way the conversation had gone. I really don't think anything's gonna stay a secret if you tell Makasuke. Is that okay? Kare mo so da kedo kimi mo taigai da ne. Ema ima sara odoroki wa s h i n a kedo. What? Tori a i z u kono anashi wa owari ni shio. Mokra wa hoka go no yotei no mai ni. Iku beki tokoro ga arun ja nai kai? Ah, Hina! Crap, I forgot to get the lunch. Sorry, some 10 minutes in the lunch break after the conversation we've been roped into. I can't keep Hina waiting. Just stay put, Hina, I'll be right there. Come on, Natsuki. She's gone, but she's a hero. Hero, but she's gone. I'm not sure if she's a hero. I'm not sure if she's a hero. What, I can't like my sister? Jesus Christ. I think Akatsuki said something, but I noticed it was running, so I couldn't really hear it. More importantly, I had to get to Hina as fast as I could. Hina had been waiting violently for us all on her own and didn't even censor me for being late when we arrived at the cafeteria. The effect of our tardiness, however, was immediately apparent. There was nowhere in the cafeteria for three people to sit together. This was why I was looking for a place outside to eat, but had yet to find somewhere suitable. My phone? Is that me? It's probably me. My phone vibrated, informing me of a call. When I saw the name on the display, I hit the button with a faint bit of hope in my heart. Find some more Akatsuki? <laughs> Serious news. <laughs> Will you shut up and just tell me the news, man? What are you talking about? What? <gasps> Are you serious? Jump? That's terrible. Are they going to be okay? The roof. I reflexively looked up after hearing the story from Akatsuki. The looming walls of the school building, and beyond that, clouds drifting through the deep blue sky. That's all I should have seen, yet my eyes met someone else's. Pure, beautiful eyes that didn't know fear. It was as though time had stopped, like a piece of film that had been captured, a perfect shot. I remembered hearing that when a human brain senses an impending crisis, it utilizes its absolute maximum processing ability. But I didn't even have time to use that processing power. Before I knew it, I was spreading my arms. Because even if it was reckless, if no one else was there and I was the only one who could act, then that's exactly what I had to do. Alrighty. Well, I think that's enough for the quick look. It's gone on rather lengthy, unfortunately, but this is a very long game from my understanding. The VNDB pegs it at like between 30 and 50 hours. Um, the game is currently, um, well, it's on sale, like $34.95 on Steam, or $35.95, something like that. Um, it's like 10% off, you know, like, you know, like a release date sale that a lot of games have nowadays. Um, usually gonna be $39.99. So if you want to buy it, I will link it in the description. And I hope you all enjoyed Sorcery Jokers. And I'm hoping to play more of this on my own time. And with that, I will see you all later. And have a good day.